Hello and welcome to the Black Bear Prepper channel. So I'm I'm Black Bear Prepper. So today we're going to be talking about what to do now if you purchased a gun and now you've got your, all these ammo choices out there. We're going to talk a little bit about what they mean and they're going to be very basic. So if you are a gun guy, a lot of this is going to be just completely too low for you if uh, need be. But otherwise, stick around and see what happens, okay? So we're going to talk a little bit about kind of the three varieties, and we are going to keep, there's a hundred thousand varieties of ammo out there. Do keep in mind, we're going to kind of keep these basic, you know, spots. We might talk a little bit more about other spots when we're talking about other different kinds of things that we do, like bear defense and things like that. So we're going to kind of start with your practice type ammunition. Okay, practice type ammunition, meaning that it is going to be a full nosed or full jacketed round a little cheaper you know that's what we're going to use for our practice now this particular round right here it is a full copper jacketed round so if we look on our box here it says 10 millimeter which is the size of the ammo we're not going to get into caliber debates just don't care pick the gun that you shoot well that's what you should use so it says 180 grain we're going to get into what grain weights mean here in a second and then it says GR for grain. That means 180 grain. And then you're going to come here and it's going to say FMJ, full metal jacket. So full metal jacket, meaning that it has no hollow point. It has no soft tip. It's fully enclo enclosed, okay? So that's usually what you're going to see is your practice type ammo. Now, when we get from there, we're going to go from there into... You know your protection type ammo so this is the ammo you're going to take to the range you know and shoot off and we're not going to worry about it all who cares about that around that's just practicing definitely have something around because it's much much cheaper than our next level so our next level is going to be your home defense round or a hollow point type round okay so for all you crazy people out there that you know we are talking about guns on the table we're going to talk a little bit about you know why they're here we do have live ammunition here there is nobody behind me it's a safe direction behind me just in case you know that i'm using a remote so big and bad for me right so they're all flagged they're all checked just so you know but we are we do have live ammo on there so that's why they're all flagged so we have around here 10 millimeter hollow point so if we go to its box we see that it's a 10 millimeter 200 grain which you'll sometimes see a lot of times a heavier grain bullet with a jhp jacketed hollow point round meaning that it has a hollow point in the front it has a jacketed copper plating on there and then you will see a lead internal part some of them will say copper only that's a lot of places require that for hunting now where they're only copper or lead free so here lead free that tends to be I'm not a big fan of them. I think lead does a great job of dispatching animals. And anytime we can be more humane with anything we're going to kill, I'm a meat eater. It's my goal always to dispatch the animals as quickly as humanly possible. So then you might also see a, uh, we're going to go with a SJHP, semi-jacketed hollow point. And that's where you get into something like this 357 here where you have you have a jacket, you can see the copper plating here on the bottom. You guys probably can't see it, but it goes copper, lead, hollow point, hole through the top. So that's another kind of popular one for revolvers. Um, you can also get them in full, uh, you know, full copper, like I was talking about before. And you can also get them in a complete lead round. Now this is soft lead. So anytime we're dealing with lead in the bottom area here in these first two, it's just going to be lead lead. Soft lead penetrates and expands really, really well. Then we get into our dangerous game protection rounds. This is where you're going up in the mountains. You want to defend yourself from bears, mountain lions, blah, 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 tigers, oh my. So we're not going to get into what you're hunting with this. This is defensive rounds, not for hunting. That's a whole other topic of what you want to hunt dangerous game with that is something beyond what we're talking about now we're talking about taking the gun you have now and making it most effective 
if you're carrying it in the woods. So I see a lot of people bringing 380s into the woods with hollow point rounds. That is not going to stop a bear. Now that same gun with a hard cast bullet gives you a much better penetration factor. Meaning that most of these are going to penetrate somewhere in the 12 to 14 inches range. This one is going to penetrate through ballistic gelatin three feet. I mean, just a massive amount better. So this happens to be the Buffalo Bore 9mm. Uh, they sell it in all versions, and you can get them for 357s, 9mm, 40 cows, whatever you want. This happens to be, we're going to get into, it's the Outdoorsman, which is their bear protection round. And we look on here, it's 147 grain, hard cast, meaning that it's not soft lead, it's hard cast. Meaning that if I shoot this, into an animal, I can usually pull it out of the animal. It looks identical as the day it was put in there. So that's really kind of important. It's a really, really, really hard material. Now, a lot of guns will say they don't want you to shoot lead in them. This is a little different. They tend, and it's not meant to be shoot 200 rounds through there. It also has the def definition of a plus P. Plus P's is more power plus power. Sometimes you'll see plus P plus. Make sure your gun can handle that. Not all guns are rated for plus P ammo, so you might have to pick a different company that makes something different, or call the manufacturer of the ammo you're wanting to use and see if they have something that isn't a plus P. So you'll see that a lot of times with smaller ammunition like 380s, 9mm, 357s, or not 357s, but 38 Special, all those kind of animals that are standard pressure, they're going to do plus P or plus power, plus pressure, and they're, they can be damaging to guns that are not equipped for that. Sometimes it's as simple as just getting a different barrel. So a barrel that, you know, you a lot of times like, um, you know, this Glock here, I can buy a lot of different types of barrels for it. I can buy ones that are designed specifically for lead, hard lead cast bullets. I found that it doesn't seem to affect me. That is my experience, not your experience. So kind of keep that in mind. The things we're talking about today are dealing with my experience and my the way I do things. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just giving you an idea on what might be out there and how to kind of read the boxes. So once we get into that, we've kind of talked about, you know, our, our um, target ammo. This will penetrate too far. This is not something we want in houses. So uh, the reason you wouldn't want a full metal jacket round is it tends to penetrate too far. If you're trying to shoot somebody in your house that has intruded into your home, Whatever that reason is, let's give. we're not talking about legality now. We're talking about you've decided somebody's in your home, you don't want them in there, and you decide to shoot them. We want the round to go into them and stop, okay? That's where a hollow point does really well. It expands out. It's just like imagine you're taking your hand, you're sticking out your car window, and you hold your hand out flat, and the wind pushes it back versus taking your hand, putting it into the wind, and how you can cut right through the wind. When, there's, when that hollow point round expands, it comes in and expands out, flares out. It's like putting on the brakes and causing a lot of damage inside the body. And also keeping it from penetrating all the way through the body with any kind of real force. Because we do not want to kill another family member or anything else or somebody we're not tending to hurt on the other side. Remember, that's always a good idea to keep in mind that rule of, you know, guns are always loaded, but also making sure that whatever we're deciding to shoot at, we're ready to kill. And then we're also observing the backdrop behind them. Is that your family's bedroom? Is that your daughter's bedroom? Your boy's bedroom? Whatever that is. You know, that kind of thing. Um, when we get into the hollow points, hollow points come in all different kinds of flavors. But the biggest one will be grain weight. Uh, this is where I kind of get into people picking a similar round to their carry round. So if I'm going to carry a 200 grain um, hollow point in my gun, it might be a good idea for me to shoot a 200 grain practice round because they'll have the same recoil roughly. Also, we want to make sure they're hitting in the same spot. We want to make sure that just because I'm shooting my practice round, that a lot of times that other round doesn't hit in a different spot, you know. There's point of aim and point of impact, meaning where I aimed my gun and where the round actually went. We want them to end up in the same spot so we know that when we're practicing with it, we're using good practice techniques, we know that the gun is going to go in the same direction. So shoot your very expensive, don't get me wrong, 
but how much is your life worth your real rounds so we usually what I do is every six months I take the rounds out of my mags that are my protection type mags and I'll go ahead and run those through the gun make sure they run flawlessly most rounds will last a year but I always like to give it an extra six months so I usually do it at six months that is up to you though and you're gonna have to make those decisions and contact the manufacturers to make that happen okay now when it comes to rifle rounds guys we get a couple different other versions we have full metal jacket same idea it's the you know full metal jacket meaning the um, you'll usually be FMJ full metal jacket then we get into the hollow point for your rifles this happens to be a 556 with a hollow point the hollow point is very very tiny at the very end it is you can barely just you gotta look really close or put on your glasses to see this and then we have what we call soft tip rounds um, there will be a round that isn't hollow pointed but has lead all the way out to the front you can get that a lot on your um, 357 was real popular for that too because they do that with deer um, anything that moves really fast that doesn't need that extra hollow point that's kind of a cool cool feature <clears throat> so in a house I mean I don't want to choose a full metal jacket round a hollow point type round or a soft point type round will expand a little more giving a better chance it's going to stop in the person I want it to go into or the item I want it to go into so guys that's kind of where we're at we're talking about that now let's get into a little bit of, of bullet weight okay now we're going to use nine millimeter as an example this does not hold every single round out there has 150 different flavors of all the different weights there are out there um nine millimeter comes in three basic flavors and a thousand others but the most common are 115 124 and 147 okay so this particular one is a 147 so this is the well, your heavier rounds will hit harder and they'll tend to do more damage not always it matters on the round this happens to be a really pumped up round so it's going to go really fast and it's going to hit really hard because it's heavy so the heavier the bullet the harder it hits the also the more it kicks so that equal and opposite reaction type deal so you might want to keep that in mind when you're shooting a gun that is very very small that has a short barrel that doesn't have enough time to speed up a smaller faster round might be better for that because it allows the bullet to expand there's lots of videos on now there on every single type of ammunition there is make sure you kind of keep that in mind okay so um, I do shoot a different round in my shorter barreled nine millimeters than I do in my full size nine millimeters I shoot a lighter weight round in my smaller guns because they're harder to hold on to if you bought a really really tiny gun thinking that's great for your hundred pound girlfriend that just makes it really hard to rack and a lot harder to shoot because it's harder to hold on to. This particular one gets you all three fingers on there, but most of these little guns, you can only get two fingers on there, and a lot of times it's a lot harder to hold on to. So smaller guns tend to kick more. They're lighter. Lighter guns kick more. So that might be something to think about when we're purchasing rounds. And always, guys, use the rounds for practice to make sure it works in your gun. Not all guns shoot the same. Not all guns run the same rounds. I've had 9mm that won't shoot in certain guns because the primers are too hard. So every other round just doesn't go off. That was a big thing when we had the Uzi ammunition in the 90s when I was shooting competition. We'd get it and it just wouldn't work for 90% of the time. But it was cheap. So it was great for practice and practicing your malfunctions. So um, I hope this has helped, guys. As always, like, share, tell your friends, and, you know, tell any questions you have down the bottom. I'd be happy to answer them. I try to get to all of them. If I don't, send another comment. I'll get back to you. I do apologize if I don't get back to you right away, but I try to. So as always, guys, the Black Bear Prepper, have a great day.